A college girl is unmarried and pregnant, but her boyfriend abandoned her mercilessly. Father had to marry her off to a rural guy in order to save the family's honor. The first time they meet, the beautiful Ivy stands in front of Ray's eyes. Ray's head drops and he doesn't dare to look at Ivy. He touched his face nervously. His hands were trembling when he poured the water. Ivy could see his nervousness and anxiety. So she took the initiative and said to him, Now that we've met, do you have any doubts after seeing me in person? Ray said he didn't have any problems and fiddled with his tie nervously. Ivy asked Ray if he would love the baby in her belly. Ray promises her that he does. Ivy's uneasy feeling disappears for a while, and Ray felt as if it was a dream. He couldn't believe that such a beautiful girl could be abandoned. They had just met in the morning. In the afternoon, they were married in a hurry. The priest had asked Ray to put the ring on Ivy's finger. Ray said he was inexperienced in his first marriage. He didn't know they needed a ring to get married. Luckily, Ivy didn't care about the ring either. The modest ceremony ended imperfectly. Then, Ray took his new wife home with trepidation, and Ivy was worried about the unknown home that lay ahead. They finally arrived home after passing through many fields. Ivy looked around and surveyed the place. A dog barked to bring Ivy's thoughts back, and Ray said he was worried about Ivy's fear of dog, so he locked the dog up before he left. Ray opened the door for Ivy as a gentleman. Then he gently said to Ivy, Welcome home. His gentle voice also made the corners of Ivy's mouth turn up slightly. Ivy looked at the simple but clean and tidy room. She felt like it wasn't that bad after all. Ray took Ivy to the room where his parents used to live. It was the largest and best lit bedroom in the house. It was also Ray's special room for Ivy. Ray himself lived in a bedroom with a double bed. Ray continued to patiently introduce Ivy to the furnishings of the house. He knew Ivy was coming and had installed a water heater. But Ivy didn't pay much attention to his presentation. She was only concerned about whether there was a phone in the house. Ray is embarrassed to say that only the city has a phone. While they were having dinner, Ray learns that Ivy is a graduate student in archaeology. She specializes in the disappearance of Troy. Ray didn't understand what Ivy was talking about, but he did his best to accommodate Ivy. After the meal, Ray takes the initiative to clear the table. Ivy takes this opportunity to ask why Ray agreed to marry her. Ray thinks it's all God's will. They say goodnight and go back to their rooms. Ray added Ivy's name to the family tree and he kept it like a treasure. Ivy quietly put on the necklace her ex-boyfriend gave her. She secretly looked at the picture of her ex-boyfriend. This man was a pain she couldn't get out of her mind. Early the next morning, Ivy said she wanted to go to the city to call her family. Ray dropped his work immediately. He drove Ivy for over an hour to the city. Ivy rushed into the phone booth. Ray took the opportunity to go to the library and check out a few books. In addition to the cookbooks Ivy wanted, he also asked the librarian for books on Troy. He wanted to have more to talk about with Ivy. In addition, he borrowed a book on parenting. Ivy, meanwhile, was telling her sister about how uncomfortable it was. Even though Ray was nice to her, but she couldn't get over her ex-boyfriend, she kept asking her sister about her ex-boyfriend's whereabouts. On the way back, Ray himself taught Ivy how to drive his little jalopy, so that Ivy could go into town by herself whenever she wanted. Ivy has a long lost smile on her face when she learns to drive. In exchange for this, Ray sends Ivy to the city many times to send letters to her ex-boyfriend. With nothing else to do, Ivy learns to cook from recipes. The beautiful woman learns to cook. Ray was captivated by Ivy's serious look. He wanted to go up to Ivy and hug her. But he was worried that his wife, who didn't know him well, would be angry. Ivy placed the finished omelette in front of Ray. Ray ate the omelette with a serious look. He kept saying how good it tasted, but the look on his face betrayed him. When Ivy turned around, Ray grabbed a glass of water and took a big sip. At that moment, the sound of an excavator roared outside the house. Ivy came outside and asked Ray what he was doing. Ray said that since Ivy liked to swim, she would dig a pool. This way Ivy and the kids can swim here in the summer. It turns out that Ivy had just said she liked to swim. Ray would dig a pool for her. If Ivy wanted the stars in the sky, I'm sure Ray would have picked them for her. Ray was clumsily fiddling with the excavator. Ivy looks at Ray in danger and says she didn't ask Ray to do any of these things. Ivy was now for months pregnant and her belly was getting bigger and bigger. Ivy said that soon everyone would know she was having a baby before she got married. Ray didn't care what people thought. He said those people wouldn't say anything because they all want us to be happy. Ivy was relieved of her worries for a while. That day Ivy met two Japanese girls in the field. Ivy learned that they were both high school students. They were only forced to come here because of the war. 
Ivy also talked to them. They became Ivy's only friends. Ivy tells Ray about the girls, but Ray didn't seem happy about it because his brother was killed at Pearl Harbor. He more or less hated the Japanese. One day Ray takes Ivy to his sister's house. His brother-in-law and Ray were discussing the crops in the fields. Ray saw how out of place Ivy was, so he initiated the conversation about Troy. It was a topic that no one but Ivy knew anything about. This took Ivy by surprise. She didn't expect this man to be this attentive, so Ivy explained Troy to everyone. Ray watched Ivy and his family talk so eloquently. His eyes were filled with love for Ivy. Late at night they returned home. Ivy looked even more beautiful in the moonlight. Ray couldn't resist the urge to go up to Ivy and kiss her. But his kiss was avoided by Ivy because she couldn't get her ex-boyfriend out of her mind. That day Ivy's sister Abby came to visit her. Abby said this place was even more rundown than she thought. It's a barbaric place. Abby saw that Ivy was wearing clothes that didn't fit. So Abby persuaded Ivy to come back to the city with her. Their family could have faked Ray out as a domestic violence man. But Ivy says Ray is the most gentle man she's ever met. You cannot love someone, but please don't hurt them. Abby knows Ivy has no intention of going back to the city. So she stops trying to persuade her. Ivy took out a letter and gave it to Abby. She asked her sister to make sure she sent it. The letter contained a lot of her thoughts about her ex-boyfriend. One day Ivy found the bomb shelter Ray had mentioned. There were many antiques left behind by his ancestors. This surprised Ivy, who studied archaeology. She decided to take them back and study them. Instead, Ray burned the old things as garbage. Ivy is shocked and runs out of the car to stop Ray from burning the stuff. She asks Ray where he put the burlap bag and what you did to it. Ivy rushed into the house in anger. Ray then realized he had made a big mistake. But what's burned is gone. He brought back the burlap sack that hadn't burned out and explained to Ivy that he regularly cleaned out the useless stuff. Ivy said it was your family history. They weren't trash at all. The next morning, Ivy sees the letter Ray left on the table. Ray said that if Ivy liked junk, she would like the cellar. But there's a lot of dust in there, so you have to be careful. And sure enough, Ivy found a lot of treasures in the cellar. They were a great way to satisfy her desire to explore history. She even let Ray hand the old antiques on a wall. Ray didn't know what the point of doing that was, but Ivy said so. So he did, because he would do anything for Ivy. Ray had a phone installed in the house for Ivy to call. As time went by, their relationship began to develop further. Ivy was getting used to life here, but unfortunately, winter was approaching. Ivy took the dog back to the house with her. In the evening, Ivy makes Ray's favorite soup and prepares a romantic candlelight dinner with him. But Ray doesn't seem happy. He gets mad at the dog in the house. He wanted the dog out of the house. Ray's uppers frightened Ivy. Ray says they never let the dog in the house. But what really upset Ray was the letter he had in his hand from Ivy's ex-boyfriend. Ray wasn't in the mood to have dinner with Ivy at all. He left the house on the excuse of working the late shift at the sugar beet factory. The next day, Ivy woke up early and made breakfast for Ray. Ray ignores Ivy. Ivy asked Ray to stop him and apologized. Ray asks instead, is it your mistake for not being with him or for being married to me? Ivy said you would feel better if I left. Ray didn't say anything but went up to Ivy and kissed her. And this time Ivy didn't reject him. Ray asked Ivy, is there anything you like about me? This left Ivy wondering what to do. So she found Ray's sister and told her everything. His sister said that when Ray loves someone, he gives his heart and soul to them. If you're planning on leaving, do it soon. On Thanksgiving Day, Ivy said at the dinner table that she was planning on leaving. She was grateful for all the love and acceptance she had received. She said she had learned more in the six months she had lived with this family than she had in her father's house in the 25 years. I received love here and I also received understanding. Ray didn't say anything but just listened quietly. They came home. Ray brought the dog into the house and said he was okay with whatever Ivy did. He just hoped she wouldn't leave. Ray said, I fall in love with you. I love that baby. For me you're the best thing that's ever happened. Ray finished and took out the ring he had just bought. It was his wedding ring that he gave to Ivy. Ivy was so touched by Ray's sincerity. At this moment, she was tempted to stay, but she wasn't sure if she was really good enough for Ray. Ray said, someday you're gonna forgive yourself. Ivy came to see her best friend off for the weekend as promised. Flores introduces Ivy to her boyfriend. Ivy sees something wrong with the man right away. He's actually a prisoner of war in a uniform, and he was on a trip to get Ivy to help him escape. Ivy didn't expose his lies, she just kept persuading Flores to come back on the road. It's a good thing she listened to Ivy. Ivy took the man to her home and lied. 
that he would not be able to cross the border. In this outfit, she told him to go change into her husband's clothes. Ivy pretended to leave the car keys in a visible place. Then she hid the oil from the car while the man was changing. Sure enough, the man stole the car keys when Ivy wasn't looking. Ivy found out that the man had taken the bait and immediately dialed the sheriff's phone number. Soon the man was caught and Ivy's water broke. She excitedly rushed out and asked Ray to get Betty for their baby. Ray picked Ivy up and happily shouted that our baby was coming. The baby was born. Ray looked at the baby with a loving face. He was humming the song his father used to sing to him. At this moment, Ivy truly realized that Ray was her true happiness. Maybe not everyone will have the amazing feelings, but in the ordinary years, everyone can have an ordinary but true love. This is the magic of ordinary days.